It's been an eventful first day at the fourth Samoan conference with conversations led by Mr. Sean Mellon on heritage and culture preservation. Mellon, along with the likes of Dr. Salain Olo Wilson, Dr. Brian Olofaituli, and countless others, presented papers on ways to preserve Samoan culture. Dr. Wilson, though, leaned heavily on Samoan language preservations, mainly within New Zealand community, calling it a must to teach young Samoan children in New Zealand the language. Growing up in New Zealand, has, it has been difficult to uh, maintain the language, and it's needed constant um, deliberate efforts to do so. But I started to see language shift happening around me in my own family and in my peers, and that kind of made me start to wonder what's going on, what's happening with our language here in New Zealand. She says children are too often on their tablets and not speaking in their native tongues. To add to that, she emphasised the importance of the Lotu of Yafia Ainga as a way to keep the language spoken routinely. Meanwhile, discussions leader Sean Mellon drifted more on the simple acts that Samoan show that are well a part of Samoan culture. The pusaumu that we nervously take on the plane when going overseas, the Yetonga as it's used in the Ifonga or Fadalinga, he says are symbolic still today as they were in the past. Now the label in the exhibition says packed with love, packed with alofa. So an ordinary thing can tell a wonderful story about how we keep connected to our friends and family overseas. Everyone waits for the umupak. <laughs> Not everything in the museum might be a treasure, but it was treasured by someone. And to cap off the first day of Samoa Conference, former Member of Parliament of Wallo Dr. Wood Salele raised eyebrows when he called for the London Missionary Society to apologise for the widespread of the influenza epidemic in 1918. A hundred years later, Dr. Brian Alofaituli presented a paper proposing that the Reverend Elders, who at the time had been infected with the disease, were the cause of its widespread. On November 7, 1918, the SS Taloon docked in Apia. November 8th and number 9th, which is a Friday and Saturday, that the, the spread of the influenza was very quick. But then it gets to the second Sunday of the month, November 10th, the second Sunday of the collection of the funds of the La Mosa. It is most likely that that was probably another contributing factor to that. The purpose of this paper is not to find who was at fault or, or to look at multiple theories of how this came about. But the purpose of this paper today is to see, in, to see the resilience of Samoans to overcome many of the hardships that they have gone through. And, but more importantly, that this November commemorates the 100th anniversary of the influenza epidemic in Samoa. Topical discussions continue with the likes of Tangaloa Peggy Dunlop leading conversations on leadership in day two. That's all we've got for you today on the first day of Samoa Conference 4. We will be back with another short recap on the day from your NUS Samoa Conference media team.